a detailed working document, all documents that would guide the incoming cabinet members on the direction of government regarding policies, programs and projects. Ahead of inauguration of President Muhammadu Buhari for second term in office, federal government inaugurates 15-month committee to audit its administration's policy and project implementation for improved performance. That the ninth assembly is going to be very robust, it's going to be very united. Senators elect pledge good working relationship with the executive arm as presidential aide urges eighth assembly to accelerate passage of 2019 approval. We're delighted to be able to uh, formalize this uh, bilateral. Uh, relationship and to um, capture our cooperation um, more directly. Nigeria and United Nations enter a new agreement on tackling HIV AIDS at a time the federal government re-strategizes to improve response to the disease. Good evening and a warm welcome to NTA Network News, reaching you live from Abuja. I am Jumma Yusuf. Reading with me tonight is Jennifer Igwe in Lagos and Kemi Oshin in Badong. Now, preparatory to the inauguration of a new administration, the federal government has constituted a 15-member policy programs and audit committee headed by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. <laughs> At the inauguration of the audit committee, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju underscores the need for a concrete preparation for the takeoff of a new cabinet beginning from May 29, 2019. In accordance with his terms of reference, the committee is to do the following one, to audit and determine the status of implementation of policies, programs and projects either inherited or commenced by the outgoing administration. Two, to identify and highlight the residue of works and challenges that may militate against their successful implementation. And three, to prepare and produce a detailed working document and all documents that would guide the incoming cabinet members on the direction of government regarding policies, programs, and projects to co-opt any organizations or persons relevant towards the successful execution of the program and to make any other recommendations as may be considered necessary. President Muhammadu Buhari recently approved the establishment of the Policies, Programs and Projects Audit Committee with a view to taking stock of the administration's performance thus far. As Vice President Oshimbaju explains, the plan is for the team to prepare a working document for incoming ministers. The committee will also ensure that we have objective reports, very critical analysis and realistic projections, all of which will constitute clear guidelines for each cabinet minister. We will focus on ensuring that we have for the incoming cabinet a clear presentation, ministry by ministry, on what government needs to do the challenges to be envis envisaged and the implementation plan. Present at the inauguration are the Chief of Staff to the President, Abba Kiari, Minister of Budget and National Planning, Utoma Utoma, and the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, as well as Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audu Ogbe, National Security Advisor, Babagena Mungunu, and the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu. They are to serve as members of the committee with eight others who are represented at this event. The Deputy Chief of Staff to the President, Ade Ikbaye, will serve as Secretary to the committee. And the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. 
Meanwhile, Vice President Chiemi Oshibajo says the continued trust and support of the people are crucial to achieving set goals by the Buhari administration. The Vice President, as an appreciation dealer for volunteers during the 2019 elections campaign, thanked Nigerians for their belief in the President, giving him the mandate to serve for a second term. Vice President Chiemi Oshibajo emphasized that their trust will not be betrayed as the administration is more determined to meet the expectations of all Nigerians. Nigerians. Again, Jide Onifadi reports. We're supposed to be offering these people comfort, offering them circle, offering them hope. But they themselves are so hopeful. They are the ones who are even offering the support, offering all of the comfort and, you know, offering us all of their love and everything that... The Vice President, recounting the numerous and shows of love and kindness, he received from Nigerians as he went about every nook and cranny of the country during the campaign towards the 2019 elections. I say a very big thank you to the Nigerian people for the contributions that they made to bringing us here. The lesson from these interactions with Nigerians, as the Vice President says, is that the leaders must find a way of connecting to the people they serve this, he says, the administration would do in this second coming and get the people more involved and well informed of activities and achievements of government. The vice president says Nigerians are right in their belief that the Buhari administration is what the country needs at this time, stressing that the nation would progress faster with a leader that is honest. Business of doing the right thing, of, of governing right, it's not rocket science. If the president is an honest man, as we have an honest man, everything we want done will be done. And I believe very strongly that with your support, with your continued support, all of what we wish, all of what we want for our country will be done. And by the grace of God, every one of the infrastructure projects that we want done will be done. Our economy will turn around and we will see prosperity in this great nation of ours. He urged the people to work harder towards achieving success in the rerun elections coming up on the 23rd of March. For retired General Puba Marwa and others, appreciation also goes to the president and all those involved in the cause of moving the country forward. We can only wish our leadership, God's continued blessings and guidance and peace and prosperity for Nigeria. It is imperative that certain reforms, such as electoral reforms, internal party reforms, and judicial reforms are undertaken to give the good people of this country a fighting chance. As this gift indicates, the people expect more goals to be achieved from the government in coming years and promised their continued support for the Buhari administration. From the banquet hall of the State House, Jide Onifadi, NT News. And senators elect have assured Nigerians of a good working relationship with the executive arm of government in the Ninth Assembly. This came to the fore during a familiarization dinner organized for the new legislatures. Ignatius Unko reports. About 10 o'clock in the morning of Thursday, 14th of March, 2019, senators-elect were at the International Conference Center, Abuja, to collect their certificate of return. Nine hours later, it was time to dine and wine together. For the new ones, it was a first get-together, and to the serving senators, it was a continuation of a tradition. To the new entrants into the Red Chamber, it was a time for familiarization with the old tenants. But interestingly, the focus at this evening gathering was on the need for unity of peoples towards national development, need for cordial working relationship with the executive arm of government in the Ninth Assembly was paramount. I believe that the Ninth Assembly is going to be very robust, is going to be very united, because I can see different people from different divides, from different constituencies. Uh, executive, legislative, uh, uh, atmosphere has not been very cordial, so uh, I think uh, by the time we are uh, coming, having experienced what it is like to be on the executive side, we'll try our best to see that uh, uh, we bring down the temperature a bit. That we 
have a united front so that we can work harmoniously with the executive. Is to ensure that the interests of Nigerians, the welfare of Nigerians are, you know, primary concern. And the greater arm of government. Senate leader Ahmed Lawan shared some of his experiences with his new colleagues. We should work towards a relationship that will be characterized by consultation, by coordination, by partnership, and serious and deep synergy between the two arms of government. I think this night and night should be substantially different from the internet. Some serving members used the forum to commend the Senate leader, Ahmed Lawan, for his exceptional leadership qualities. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. In another development, the senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly matters, Ita Enang, has advised the National Assembly to give accelerated consideration to the 2019 appropriation bill. He gave this advice when he briefed National Assembly correspondents. The legislative aide expressed concern over the delay in the consideration of some of the items pending in the Senate, especially the medium-term expenditure framework, the national minimum wage bill, and the confirmation of the chairman and members of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Appropriation bill. Let them also consider as priority the medium-term expenditure framework which they have committed to the committee. And of course, the medium-term expenditure framework is going to be the basis of their determining different parameters that is going to be used in the consideration and passage of the 2019 appropriation. On our part, as the liaison and the executive, that the executive is ready with all, the, all their system to come in and defend the budget, also use opportunity to pray the legislature that the budget of the different government-owned agencies and corporations is still pending before them. And unless this budget of the different agencies are passed, considered and passed, then we still have a lot to lose in terms of opportunities for employment in those ministries and some capital projects which would have deflated the economy and given more people things to do. Nigeria has formally signed a cooperation agreement with UNAIDS which will further deepen the collective effort of fighting HIV AIDS in the country. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Oyema, who signed on behalf of Nigeria, said the agreement comes just after Nigeria announced its latest AIDS indicator and impact survey, which will improve response to the disease. Foreign Dex correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. Before now, Nigeria's relationship with the United Nations program on HIV AIDS was on a broader platform of the United Nations. The signing of the cooperation agreement between Nigeria and UN AIDS brings this relationship closer and gives Nigeria more latitude in tackling HIV AIDS using the UN AIDS platform. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama says Nigeria remains committed to international partnership in dealing with these challenges. Hitherto, um, you've been under the umbrella somewhat yeah. of the larger UN body, um, but um, I think in recognition also of the status of your organization, um, we're delighted to be able to uh, formalize this uh, bilateral uh, relationship and to um, capture our cooperation um, more directly. This uh, agreement is very important and I know it would have never happened uh, without uh, your personal uh, commitment to this issue, uh, your personal uh, uh, commitment to um, multilateralism and uh, your commitment to um, partnership uh, with uh, UNAIDS. Uh, so. Both parties say they will abide by the letter and spirit of the agreement as they partner to tackle HIV AIDS. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NT News. Thank you, Makut. Nigeria should take advantage of being the largest market in Africa to build cinemas in all nooks and crannies of the country for economic diversification and development, says the Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports that this was at a conference on distribution and regulation of films in emerging new markets. 
Cinemas in Nigeria expanded and new ones established after Nigeria's independence. As a result, Nigeria's content in the theater increased in the late 1960s into the 1970s. Organized by the National Film and Video Censors Board in Abuja, it drew participation from within and outside the film industry. Talk heads of the conference centered on how to best regulate the industry without impacting negatively on the business. The Honorable Minister of Information and The Minister, represented by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Grace Gekwe, believes that more jobs will be created by building more cinemas. An opportunity to create employment for a lot of our people at the grassroots. If we have these cinemas at that level, because when you build cinema, you are going to create a lot of activities around the cinemas. To further help protect the interests of movie makers and other players, the board will henceforth give out certificates and licenses with high security features. So that when you handle it, when you hold it, you know you are holding a certificate that is. Uh, commensurate or equal to the ones we see abroad. It's that when you hold it, you know you are holding something from Nigeria, printed in Nigeria. That's the that's the game plan. The film industry is one gold mine that is waiting to be tapped. A lot of benefit comes with that, uh, in terms of economic drive, in terms of socialization, in terms of mobilization of the citizens. The board is empowered to license, censor, and classify all films and video works to be distributed and exhibited in Nigeria. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The world has adjudged Edo State the best in the south-south geopolitical zone of the country in taking concrete steps to revamp technical and vocational education. It has therefore chosen Edo for the pilot of its innovation, development and effectiveness in scale acquisition project. Good luck in any reports that Godwin, Governor Godwin Obasaki has inaugurated a 13-man committee and state steering coordinating unit for effective implementation. The United Nations through the World Bank is supporting the Federal Ministry of Education and some selected states including Edo to promote technical and vocational education in Nigeria. Governor Basaki says he will do all he can to justify the confidence. One area the governor expects the committee to focus more is on the training of teachers. It's not something that's going to be driven by government alone. That's why we have, you know, the, uh, private sector partners in here, because we're preparing people to go and work for them. So they must be on the table, they were on the discussion table, as we decide on the type of curriculum, uh, the type of orientation, the type of preparations we give to the Chairman of the committee and Commissioner for Science and Technology, Mr. Christopher Adesotu, representatives of National Board for Technical Education, say the choice of Edo for the project is timely. Edo State is the first among the states selected in the six geopolitical zones to have inaugurated a committee for this purpose. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. More reports after this time out. Do stay. Data. We can't live without it. Share it. with it. Borrow it. Sell with it. With glow, data is oxygen. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. 
But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. The National Examination Council, NECO, wishes to inform the public the registration for the 2019 National Common Entrance Examination for admission into federal government unity colleges has commenced. Eligibility. Fanaye Pupil in primary school who are less than 10 years by September 2019. Registration for the examination is done on the new NECO website www.neco.gov.ng Registration fee 2,500 Naira per candidate Payments are made into NECO TSA account through ATM, instant banking PAGA, pocket money or direct banking payment. Closing date 8 April 2019 Examination date 13 April 2019. For further information please contact www.neco.gov.ng or any NECO state office nearest to you Abubakar M. Ghana announcer <clears throat> Sore throats, it's often caused by bacteria and viruses. Feels like they're having a party. You need Strepsils. It soothes the pain, plus it fights the germs with two germ-killing actives. Double power in one lozenge. Bye-bye, sore throats. Take Strepsils. Multi Guinness is packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness on the go. Getting around heartburn and indigestion can be tricky if you eat too much. Eat food that is too spicy or greasy or lie down after eating. Heartburn and indigestion could always be around the corner. When they come, be prepared with Gaviscon Double Action. It works within three minutes and lasts up to eight hours. Gaviscon Double Action. Many causes. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. This is NTA Network News and reports just reaching us says a three-story building at Shoboe after Mapo going towards Idi Arere in Ibadan, or your state capital, has collapsed. Larry Bele reports. A three-story building that collapsed here at Soboye along Idiarere in Ibadan. And it's a number of crowd here wondering what could be done. So some are trying to make... We apologize for the loss of visuals in that report. Meanwhile, demolition of buildings that failed to meet structural tests begins in Lagos. We now join Jennifer for details and more. And a warm welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Government has commenced demolition of 80 buildings at Itafaji. The Secretary Lagos State Building Control Agency, Tayo Fako Lujo, says the building failed structural stability tests. Amakowo reports. The collapsed building on Itafaji has forced the Lagos State Government to take swift actions with regards to other distressed buildings on Lagos Island. Number 60 Freeman Street and 47 Smith Street are among buildings that operatives of the Lagos State Building Control Agency say failed to meet requirements of a structural stability tests. We're going to be doing three. This is the second one we are doing now. Okay, so and where did you start from? Um, we're in Smith. You can see the property. In a number 10 minutes, it's going to come down. 
We have excluded people from living, living there. They are all, the only people there are squatters and we have removed them. And that's why we are doing the demolition right away. Some residents expressed worry that owners of some of these buildings had defied earlier warnings by government on the poor state of these structures. Don't do it just today and leave it just as they have done. Let us know what action you are going to do to destroy that place completely to have, to have no danger. They appeal for stiffer sanctions on developers behind the erection of poor structures in the state. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. More facts have emerged on the collapsed building at Itafaji, Lagos, as family members of victims and survivors share their experiences with a news crew. Paulo Mukago, who has been following development of the incident, tells us more. Search and rescue operation has officially ended. This is all that is left of number 63 Massey Street, Itafaji. Ayominde Uwulabi, four years old, is one of the survivors. He is a pupil of ON Nursery and Primary School, which was on the top floor before the building collapsed. His father, Sahid Uwulabi, says, Ayo, as he is fondly called, never intended going to school on a fateful day. My wife called me back day that it was number eight that they pick out. So they rush him to the Massey Hospital. From Massey Hospital, transfer, they transfer him to General Hospital. So we were at the General Hospital since Wednesday. Moduno Lawa and her two children were not at home when the incident occurred. But her husband was not that lucky. Now only my husband don't die. Okay. You said be there inside the house with the I know they now I'm now only on my husband did they. One of people were there for general the carry one sack. My brother did inside. I told let me see. Let me see. Everybody can gather. Say let me see this day. Now my brother, he lost his brother there. They can't open her. I see my brother inside. I said he don't die. So a year ago, our institute drafted a bill that will stop things like this. No government, state or federal, has taken a concrete action on that bill. NTA gathered that the building was marked unsafe for human habitation during the administration of former governor Babatunde Fashola. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. Thank you, Paul. Now, management of Access Bank firmly believes in supporting women to achieve success in their businesses. One of the platforms is the WPAR Loan Initiative, targeted at meeting the financial needs of women in business. Amaka Owu reports. It was a conference to commemorate the International Women's Day. They gathered from all strata of society, especially those inclined to business. Chief Executive Officer Access Bank, Herbert Mwiwe, says it's time for women to take the pride of place and leverage on the WPAR loan as it provides not only the wherewithal to grow their businesses, but networking opportunities and capacity building platforms. At least 60 to 70 percent of SMEs in this country are female owned businesses. By support these women to grow, all right, you're actually getting into the engine of growth for the GDP of our country. And we believe that working with all our other partners, um, the next couple of years, you're going to see it even happen more. Other leading members of the bank highlighted strategies by the bank which has deepened women's participation in the financial sector. We've been able to bring over half a million uh, women into the formal financial system in the marketplaces around Nigeria. Um, and that's given them a lot more security. We've been able to um, help grow their savings, help grow um, their future for, for, for their children. Women who want to borrow up to 20 million naira can actually borrow from the bank and they don't have to come with landed property. That is the main reason why I think this product is fantastic. Panelists and other speakers urge women to key into potentials inherent in digital technology, innovation, and other intuitive knowledge they possess. We still don't have enough women in the policy arena making legislation and regulations that affect our lives. Access Bank also says women should own up to 50% of their businesses, which should have existed for at least 12 months for them to access the WPAR loan payable within 12 to 36 months. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTN News. 
West Africa Ceramic Limited, a leading manufacturer of standard ceramic tiles, says more than 90% of raw materials used by the company are sourced locally. This implies job creation for Nigerians. The managing director of the company, Bashka Rao, stated this at the Manufacturing and Equipment Expo in Lagos. Kenny Beluge reports. Established in Nigeria under the name the Royal Ceramics in 1995, West African Ceramics Limited is premium producer of porcelain, vitrified, and glaze ties in West Africa, with more than 2,000 Nigerians on direct employment and over 30,000 involved in the raw material supply. The company says its product can compete globally. We can compete it with the world uh, products. That's why I want to request all Nigerians to use Made in Nigeria products, good quality, royal brand of products. The company assures Nigerians that its state-of-art ceramic ties factories in Ajakuta and Ogo State will satisfy their desires. Uh, full uh, marble. Marble means full body. Body made in Nigeria, this one. And we can give the special effects. And this special effects is a permanent and very hard material. And it will not break. And it is a durable and uh, reliable and affordable. So the, our main aim is uh, reliability in its quality, affordability in its price and uh, service. Three we are going to give in all our products. We will try to see how we can use the resources we have to direct the relevant agencies to make sure that uh, we, 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 we uh, contribute to job creation, wealth creation uh, in our country. The company says the 2019 Expo will, to a large extent, showcase the many products of the company in Lagos. Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports with Jumai in Abuja after this time out. Stay with us. Where's your mom? Today is her toilet day. What? Helen! Toilet day? Tomorrow you're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with all this, it still won't be party ready. Impossible! Challenge? New ticker, Harpic 10X. Even if you use this solution 10 times, it won't give you the same cleaning like Harpic. Because it's new ticker formulation, sticks to the bowl better, giving you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow! New Harpic 10X gives me the freedom from toilet day. <laughs> Get five times your recharge value to call all networks without restrictions. Recharge and dial star 234 hash to enjoy this offer. Available to new and existing customers. Airtel, the smartphone network. What's up? His friends didn't come. Hey, let's practice. But you're going out. Don't worry about me. Nothing satisfies a mother more than seeing a child. How is he swayed to you? of germs which can cause skin irritation. That's why you need the new best ever Dental Cool. It's new advanced formulation with extra menthol protects from up to a hundred illness causing germs and gives your family icy cool freshness. Growing up needs dental protection. Give me the value pack. <clears throat> Helen! You do great value shopping. Absolutely. I'm a champion at getting value. Then you must have bought the Hapik 200 ml. Why Hapik when I have this? Even after applying them 10 times, they won't give a sparkling clean toilet. Impossible. Challenge. The target and bleach can't give a sparkling clean toilet even after 10 times. But Hapik 200 ml gives a sparkling clean toilet at one go. Wow. Hapik 200 ml. Real deal. <laughs> now only 200 naira. I thought leaving the country was the best decision for me and my future. I left for a better life. We were picked up by immigration officials and sent to a detention camp. I spent eight months in the detention camp. There was no food, no water. I saw people being beaten like animals. Some women were raped. 
Some women were sold as slaves. I thought I would never see my loved ones again. I have made the biggest mistake of my life. I have wasted all my savings. I have to start all over again. Migration is a human phenomenon which cannot be stopped. But if we choose to migrate, we advocate that it should be done in a safe, orderly, regular and dignified way, and not in a dangerous and tortuous manner. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. <laughs> You are watching NTA Network News. Now, participants of Executive Intelligence Management Course 12 have been mandated to prefer workable solution to migration issues and farmer headsman conflict across sub-Saharan countries. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, in a message, also reminded the participants of their professional advice that will go a long way to address such issues in the region. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. Today, many enlightened Africans are daily embarking on unguided journeys to Europe seeking greener pastures that may not exist. To address this modern trend and its challenges, the executive management course was put in place with top security experts as participants. The permanent secretary special services in the office of the secretary to the government of the federation, Amina Shamaki, who stood in for the SGF, while acknowledging the relevance of the cause, who seeks to address transnational migration issues, reminded them of their assignment in curbing this societal menace. Co to the often held belief that poverty is the main driver of immigration, the present government has embarked on various development efforts which should discourage the crave for seeking greater pastures, greener pastures in developed countries and for ensuring rapid growth and economic development. Course participants are drawn from 24 security and paramilitary agencies and four foreign nationals undertaking key study on migration-related issues and its effect to the economies of Africa countries. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed, NT News. And the Nigerian Air Force is intensifying training of special forces and production of firearms for the defense of air assets and the nation. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, said this at the graduation of Air Special Forces in Kaduna. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachukun reports. The trainees for the 4th Special Forces Course 2019, who reported on 7th of January this year, are the first batch trained by Nigerian instructors in special operations. Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar acknowledged their expertise as an indication of the substantial progress made by the Nigerian Air Force. The special forces are coming as a moral booster to the Nigerian Air Force operations. That we are very uh, confident, we are very happy with the progress we have recorded in terms of building capacity for force protection. Um, Air Force is about projecting air power, but you must have the means to protect the assets. And the Special Forces training that you are seeing here is geared primarily towards ensuring that um, uh, the process of projecting air power is uh, enhanced and is also protected. We have a force that can protect it. The training equipped participants with most specialized skills for national defense. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullah Rigachkun, NTA News. The Akiti state government has commenced implementation of its Electricity Regulation Act to boost economic and special, social development. Kola Adebubwe quotes the governor as saying, jail terms and heavy sanctions awaits offenders. With nearly 30 to 50 percent of energy distributed to customers lost to energy theft, which is manifested in form of illegal connections and vandalism of power infrastructures, including transformers, feeder pillars, electricity cable stealing, hanging of wire and bypass of meters. The existing government came up with the Electricity Regulation Act with the legislative passage and the executive approval seeking to cope and deter illegal and unauthorized use of regulated electricity supply as well as protect electricity infrastructure. Existing governor, Dr. Kari Fayemi, and the managing director and chief executive officer of Bini Electricity Company, Mrs. Funke Oshimpodu, believe the inauguration and launch of the regulatory act will go a long way at enhancing power supply to consumers, 
for social and economic development. We've been partnering with the state government to sanction when we identify such theft, um, such customers who steal our energy. The state government and the electricity company are expected to work with security agencies and judiciary for implementation of the act at checkmating the canker worms affecting the power sector energy theft in Adwekiti, Kola, Adibabuyi, NT News. Ex-agitators in the Niger Delta are urging peace in the region in order to sustain ongoing efforts towards entrenching development in the area. They said this while reacting to the recent invasion of the vocational training center in Kayama by some unidentified hoodlums who looted and vandalized the facility. In addition to that criminality, we come to realize that there is a perceived, intentional, deliberate attempt to smear the image, character, and the name of the professor, Doc Moore, who is in charge of the amnesty program. And we condemn it in totality. The amnesty program has come to stay to salvage the issues that have brought us backward. Also, what we are seeing is giving a bad names to our various communities, particularly Kayama. Meanwhile, the special advisor to the president on Niger Delta and coordinating coordinator of the presidential amnesty program, Charles Dokubo, has visited the scene where he expressed disappointment and pledged to bring the perpetrators to justice. Only that government has spent all these years to give them ways to maintain themselves and to work themselves up so that they could be citizens of this great country. But what a waste. If they continue to do this thing, the problem will not be that the government did not help Niger Delta, but the Niger Delta people destroyed their own thing. Joseph Johnson reports that investigations are ongoing. With the influx of Cameroonian refugees into Nigeria, providing for their daily needs has become an onerous tax for the federal government. It is against this backdrop that the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and
was a success. To commend the island that we enter a partnership with that engage us in the movement of this electoral material presentation. He, however, congratulated winners of the election as well as the Independent National Electoral Commission and security agencies for exhibited professionalism during the elections. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. And now Kemi is standing by in Ibadan with an update on the collapsed building with more stories. Over to you, Kemi. Thank you, Jume, and welcome to Ibadan. We told you earlier that a three-story building along Shoboye Molite Road in Ibadan collapsed tonight with people around the area making frantic efforts to pull victims out of the rubble. Larry Bilei has the situation reports. This is a three-story building that collapsed here at Soboye along Idiarere in Ibadan. And it's a moment of crowd here wondering what could be done. But some are trying to make a uh, trying to pick people out i was told there are still some people underneath the rubble and they are trying to pick people out the mumbling right now is that there's no adequate machinery that will help them to pull the people out of the rubble i have with me here an eyewitness that has been here witnessing the whole issue uh, when did this start at, uh, the incident started around 6 25 pm today uh, we were around, I was around when we just had a very astounding sound, Boa. By the time we got to the place, we discovered that the whole building, three-story building, has been pulled down. And we learned that there are still some site engineers and some big players and uh, workers that are... What do you want? What is going on right now? Like, we have been here for over three, up to four hours now. There has never been any response team to come and rescue these people. But I've seen, I've seen um, the firefighter fire, fire, fire begin, yeah. and they are here. Yeah. People are trying to uh, take people out of yeah. the rubble. People are trying to use money. What exactly do you need? Right now. We, need, we need something like crane and uh, caterpillar. There are still people under the rubble, is it? More than 15 people are still under, trapped under the rubble. So what we need is that we need emergency response team. We need crane, we need caterpillar to come and put the decking up so that people can get gain access. People are very angry right now that they need machinery, heavy equipment to pull people out of the rubble and they are calling on anybody, any individual with this machinery to pull people out. It's back to the studios. It's back to the studios. Thank you, Larry. And oh, your state governor, Abiola Jimobi, has promised to support the incoming administration and advised on initiating plans capable of sustaining peace and security in the state. The governor gave the advice when he received the governor-elect Sheyi Makide in his office. Ayomi Kwajibola reports. While congratulating the governor-elect, Governor Abela Ajimobi enjoined him to prepare for the onerous tax of governance by putting behind him all electioneering acrimonies, hedging him to ensure that all stakeholders are carried along in his administration. Every leader has his own style. It should use this time to leverage on our achievements. Describing Governor Abiola Ajimobi as a politician by excellence whose name will not be forgotten in the history of the state, the governor elect says his visit is to solicit the support of the governor for the incoming administration. No matter the uh, political affiliation, we have something in common, which is the progress and development of our state. The visit is coming on the heels of Sheyi Makinde's declaration as the winner of the Ohio State Governorship election. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Ajibola, NTA News. Thank you, Jumai. The news continues in Abuja with Jumai. Thank you so much, Kemi. Another break beckons. Don't go away. When I was a little girl, I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a mother and woman that still trusts the secrets passed down to me. It's Jake, of course. The original trusted bleach, which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's 
It's no secret. It's Jick's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jick it. Thanks for staying with NTA Network News. The Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal of the wife of former President Patience Jonathan, seeking to obtain the interim for future order placed on 2.4 billion linked to her in an unanimous judgment. The seven-man panel of justices led by the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Muhammad, dismissed the appeal for lack of merit. The Apex Court affirmed the concurrent verdicts of the Trial and Appellate Courts on the matter. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in 2017 approached a federal high court sitting in Lagos alleging that the sum was proceeds of illegal activities kept in the account of a furniture company to cancel it. Recall that the Apex Court last week affirmed the interim for feature of $8.4 million traced to the defendant and ordered her to show cause at the trial court why the money should not be forfeited permanently to the federal government. And the Buhari Media Organization received with excitement the news of the 15% rise in foreign exchange earnings from non-oil export in Nigeria. The organization notes that this is an indication of President Mohamed Buhari's foresight in diversifying the Nigerian economy. A statement by its chairman, Ni Akinsuju, and Secretary Cassidy Maduke says the expansion in production of agricultural commodities for export and mining are pulling in more foreign exchange for Africa's biggest economy. The pro Buhari group specifically applauded the Central Bank of Nigeria for its diligent management of the country's foreign exchange earnings and turning the nation's financial account balance with assets of $2,327,000,000 in the period under review against net financial liabilities of $4,650,000,000 recorded in the preceding year. And as government works towards reducing the prevalence of fake and substandard products as well as poor service delivery to the barest minimum, experts and business environment are of the opinion that consumer education is critical to protecting their rights. This, was a, this view was at a media party in commemoration of the 2019 World Consumer Rights Day in Abuja with the theme, Trusted Smart Products. Elizabeth Omori reports. No doubt, customer satisfaction is a global phenomenon which requires the attention of government, regulators and consumers. Our gas cylinder at home, we purchase it, but the value is not there. It generated a problem that we could not use it again. I ordered for a shoe from somewhere and by the time I got the shoe, it was really bad. One that, uh, that happened to me that I was like, is it my phone that is bad or something? Before you know. The data, I don't know if it was on or something, but I know the thing just on, just like that. The thing just left. Did you complain? Did you call customer no, service? No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Sequel to this, every 15th of March is observed as World Consumer Rights Day. It is a day set aside to raise awareness on the need to assist consumers get value for their money whenever they should change. It's very important that uh, we recognize what consumer rights are. With the number of years that this has happened, I think consumers are more aware of their rights. But in spite of that, there's still a long way to travel for consumers to truly understand their rights and for them to have the motivation and understand the enforcement mechanisms that are available. 
economic experts at this forum say consumer bond and social media platforms will go a long way in addressing their grievances where the companies fail to make refund or replacement. We shouldn't just keep quiet and just throw away the product and, 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 and be lamenting. We should voice it out and we should seek redress. The issue of compliance in terms and conditions was also brought to the fore. The producer has more knowledge about the product and therefore we should put obligation on proper disclosure of information. And if With the advent of technology and its attendant challenges, they suggest that consumer legislation in Nigeria be clearly applicable to online transactions in order to prevent cybercrime. They also used the opportunity to call on the Consumer Protection Council, Standards Organization of Nigeria and other regulatory agencies to improve the feedback mechanism and bridge the gap between unsuspecting buyers and sellers. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. Next is sports update with Tamara Ebiwe. Rugby, for the first time since 2009, has been relisted among the 32 sports set to feature in the 2020 National Sports Festival in Benin, Edo State. This follows the decision of the National Council of Sports after its three-day meeting in Benin, where it was equally resolved that 27 compulsory and five optional sports be slated for the festival, coming up from March 22 till April 2, 2020. The Nigeria Football Coaches Association has elected 13 executive members to run the affairs of the association for the next four years. In the annual general meeting, an elective congress held in Abuja Thursday, Coach Ladan Bosu of Gombe United was returned unopposed as president, while Rivers United coach Stanley Eguma is the secretary general. We want to discuss this issue of grassroots coach, grassroots coaches. You are a coach, you are a coach, no matter what level. And your performance will now lift you up from under 13 to under 17, from under 17 to under 20. Pep Guardiola's bid for UEFA Champions League success with Manchester City is set for further scrutiny as they play Tottenham in the quarterfinal of the UEFA Champions League. Five-time champions FC Barcelona are at Old Trafford against Manchester United as 2004 champions Porto take on 2005 winners Liverpool. Meanwhile, Arsenal will have a date with Napoli in the UEFA Europa League after the draw on Friday also paired Villarreal against Valencia as Slavia Prague entertained 2013 champions Chelsea with sports updates. Tamara Ibiwe, NTA News. And on a sad note, the body of frontline politician and former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, late Chief Joseph Kennedy Wako, has been laid to rest in his country home, Ovir. Nguma local government area of Plateau State. Elias Itvayav reports that the ceremony drew sympathizers from across the country who came to pay their last respects. Makudi, the Benin State Capital, stood still as the body of the Wambaya chief, late Senator Joseph Waku, arrived the state and was received by the two chief and the state governor for an all-night wake at his legacy house. At the funeral mass, officiating priest Reverend Father Christopher Bulogo, who prayed God to forgive the deceased shortcomings, urged sympathizers to emulate Senator J.K. Nwaku's simplicity. This man we pray for this morning was different things to different people. For some sympathizers, the demise of the philanthropist and the pillar of democracy is a painful loss not just to the family, but to humanity in general. It's a very sad thing for us as a nation, the Ochali nation. Just hard where you come from and who you are. You can see make your mark. The late Senator J.K. Nwaku, who until his demise, was a pro-chancellor and chairman of council, Federal University of Technology, Akure Futa, is survived by two wives and many children as well as grandchildren. Elias, ETA, NT News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Good night.